Hey, what's up? I'm your host, Christian Patterson, here to bring you this week's edition of TV20's Inside Sports Report. The 2018 MLB All-Star Game will be held in Washington, D.C. on July 17, 2018. There are nine positions being voted on for each division, and Cleveland Indians fans are standing strong behind the tribe. Key Bank, a vital partner to the Cleveland Indians, turned their downtown Public Square location into an all-star game voting headquarters. Fans dropped by throughout the day to vote for their favorite tribe players. Five players from the tribe were voted into last year's game. Lindor, Ramirez, Brantley, Kluber, and Miller. Currently, the tribe has a handful of players in the positional top five for voting. Jose Ramirez, first place. Francisco Lindor, fourth place. Jason Kipnis, fourth place. Michael Brantley, fifth place. Jan Gomes, fifth place. And Edwin Encarnacion, fifth place. Jose Ramirez is basically running away with his second starting nod in the MLB All-Star Game. He's also building a great case for the American League MVP award. Ramirez is currently tied at number two for most home runs with 23 after crushing a career high 29 last season. During this campaigning event, Fans not only got the chance to vote for their favorite players and receive a free Tribe t-shirt, they also got a visit from Cleveland Indians pitcher Mike Clevenger. Clevenger signed memorabilia and posed for pictures with all his fans. You can vote online a maximum amount of 35 times between June 1st and July 5th with a limit of five times per day. So please support the tribe by voting our guys in the game. Well, if you're a basketball fan, I have great news for you. June 23rd is now a basketball holiday. Go Hoop Day. This is the first year for this annual event that will be centered around local activities, grassroots events, and well, of course, hoops. Tons of NBA and WNBA players hosted events nationwide, and Cleveland native Terry Rozier put on his own event at Zelma George Recreation Center on Cleveland's east side. It's great to just bring the community together on this type of occasion. We get a chance to really celebrate one of our hometown heroes, uh, Terry Rozier, scary Terry Rozier. Uh, Terry, like so many young people in the city of Cleveland, grew up playing basketball for hours and taking advantage of the great programs here. I'm proud of his mom, uh, Gina Tucker, his, uh, his grandmother, Miss Amanda Tucker, uh, that really helped pull all this together. You have great police community relations taking place. Uh, you have a lot of, it's like a reunion. A lot of us as parents that uh, used to have children that went to the rec center here are here just remembering old times, watching all of the kids have fun and learn basketball skills. And uh, I want to tell you that I used to coach the championship team here. So it brings back memories when I can think about the good old days when we used to have uh, great teams here at Zelma. You know, growing up at this rec center, being up here every day, just get a chance to have a lot of fun, go out there and, and just shoot hoops all day. So, I mean, I've been my dream just to play basketball. So uh, this is the opportunity to do that every day. And that's what, I, that's what I did. This is only the beginning. I want to keep doing something bigger and bigger. I want to actually rebuild it when, it, when I get a chance. But uh, it's always good to see the younger kids look up to me because they was in the same position I was in. So it's always good to come back and show love. Whether it's a basketball clinic, tournament, or open gym, Go Hoop Day was created to unite athletes and bring people together to hoop. And it was imperative for a guy like Terry Rozier to come back and host this event in his community. It's very important because Terry Rozier is a hometown guy, he's a good guy, and his name is ringing bells right now, his success. So him coming back to these kids is unforgettable for them and plus, each kid get to meet him, uh, greet him, and that's, and that's great in their own lives. Terry Rozier grew up in the Cleveland area as a fan of the Cavaliers. 
and looking up to guys like LeBron James. Now he's competing against him in the NBA Conference Finals. Dream come true. I, I remember like yesterday coming here, I mean being here in 2007 when they first went to the finals with LeBron and, and me, uh, you know, just being around. Now he, you get a chance to beat them and stuff like that. It didn't work how I wanted it, but it was, it was, it was special and it, it, was, it was a dream come true. The goal of Gold Hoop Day is to get nearly half a billion people around the world to play basketball the same day and Cleveland is one piece to that puzzle. You know, this is a testament about all of the good things that's happening in Cleveland. Uh, I know we've had tragedies uh, like the recent shooting of the nine-year-old Shania, and I know that we've had other things that happened that people look at our city in a negative light. But when we see success stories like Terry and watch uh, all of the community come together like this, that's what makes it so important for us to really just stick together as a community. Even though we're dealing with trying times, with a sad case like we just saw, we still see a community coming together, really trying to show Cleveland that we still are a great city. Terry is aware of his stardom, and he knows the importance of being a positive role model for the youth. And all they need sometimes is a guy that they respect, a guy that they look up to to, to tell them to stay in school and stuff like that, and that can, that can go a long way. I was one of the kids, I used to go to the camps, uh, coming to Terrell Brandon camp up here and stuff like that and just listening to what they were saying. So you could change a kid's life just by messaging and having basketball clinics and stuff like that. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more of TV20's Inside Sports Report. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed as our nation is with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be, with the high purpose to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all. We approach this problem of re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Welcome back to TV20's Inside Sports Report. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. Cleveland sports scene is currently on full display. From the Cavs making it to the NBA Finals for the fourth straight year, to the Indians on pace for another postseason run. And finally, the Browns are looking like they have a real chance at being relevant again. Whether you're a Cleveland sports fan or not, I'm sure you've probably discussed one of these topics. And for 28 years, Temple Emmanuel has held their sports night to speak on these topics. In 1991, I, I started this event uh, because I wanted to get a group of men together and what better way is to talk about sports. And we've done this now for 28 years and what better way to get grandparents, parents, and children together. Anytime you can give back, especially with an event like this, it's got such a great history, uh, rich tradition, and it was all started by a, long, a longtime friend of mine, Danny Coughlin. So uh, really an honor and pleasure to be here. With so many storylines in Cleveland sports, Andy decided to address the elephant in the room first, and that was LeBron James and his free agency decision. You know, I think there's two ways to look at the LeBron situation. I think the best way to look at it is, hey, we're in the game. We'll see what happens. If LeBron wants to stay, that's going to be awesome, and I think it'll be great. If he leaves, um, it's much different than it was last time. Uh, we're not going to hear about the mythical Jersey burnings when there was only really one and it happened to be on TV. Um, I think the town appreciates everything that he's done. 
that he's done for the city and that uh, if he decides to leave, that's his decision this time. And I think the city of Cleveland embraces him for all the great things he's done. For the past few seasons, the Indians have truly been title contenders. And this year is no different. I mean, when you look at the Indians, they have the starting pitching to do great things this season. Uh, the organization, I feel like, is the best run in town. It's been the best run in town for years. Um, they know exactly what they want. They've got the best manager, I think, in all of Major League Baseball in Terry Francona. Uh, they've got some holes to fill with injuries that have happened in the bullpen. Uh, if things work their way out, I don't see anything but great things for the Indians. I mean, the playoffs should be there. There's, if you look at any percentage chart, they should be there right at the end. They need Andrew Miller to be healthy. They probably need to pick up another bat if they do. Um, but I think the biggest thing is making sure the bullpen is where it's been in the past to give them some length in the playoffs this year, which they didn't have last year. And we all know Cleveland is a Browns town. So to have a new front office and so many new players, fans are excited for the future. If you look at the Browns situation, it's hard to imagine that they've only won one game in the last two years. I think people are really excited about what they have. I'm excited about Tyrod Taylor because I think this is a guy that's going to come in here, be a leader, and take some of the pressure off of Baker Mayfield. Now, you can't sit here and say the number one pick overall in the NFL draft isn't going to be playing and playing sometime soon. But knowing that you've got a guy like Tyrod Taylor that can lead this team, they went out and got Jarvis Landry. You add that to Josh Gordon as long as everything stays uh, on the straight and narrow with him. This could be a great year. I think one of the questions we're going to be asking ourselves, though, a couple weeks into the season is, ooh, what's going on at left tackle? And if Sean Coleman can do what he needs to do, we won't be asking that question. But not having Joe Thomas back next year, it makes things really interesting. I still have high hopes for the Browns this year, more high hopes than I've had in a long time. When we first started, you know, the Cleveland teams weren't really doing that well. The Browns were on the verge of moving. The Cavaliers were coming out of the years of Brad Doherty and Mark Price, and the Indians were just struggling. Jacobs Field hadn't even opened yet. And once Jacobs Field opened, you know, we, we had uh, a lot of interest in the Indians, and, and we had those great teams in the 90s where we set those records, and, and people were always very enthusiastic, and people asked some great questions and answer, questions, uh, trying to put the, the speaker on the spot, so to speak. <laughs> When I think about Cleveland sports fans, I think about it's the essence of what we are. You know, we're in a religious building right now, but part of the religion when I was a kid was Sundays not at temple or a church, but it would be Sundays in front of the couch with my dad and my brother and my mom and my sister watching the Browns game. I think sports in Northeast Ohio is a religion and into its own. Um, I think it's one of the best things we can do to keep our family units together. It gives fathers and sons and mothers and daughters a, a family bond that I think there's uh, it's intergenerational, much like tonight's event, that you have the opportunity to share a moment, and it doesn't matter if you're 92 or if you're 12, you still understand what football is or, or baseball is or basketball. And so when you're rooting for the team that says Cleveland across the front, it brings us all together, and it doesn't matter who you are. Thanks for watching the Inside Sports Report. If you would like to catch past episodes of Inside Sports Report, classic sports, or any city championship games, head over to our TV20 YouTube channel and click on subscribe.